Hello everyone. Um, okay, so today was uh, April the 20th, our first TOS uh, today, um, as you know, and I will show you a little bit later and speak about that. Let's just say, did it go according to plan? No, it did not go according to plan, but we'll get to that soon. Before we get there, I will. I just want to show you my frugal baskets. You've probably noticed the ones that's been following me a bit, that I'm a typical backyard pigeon fancier. And uh, none of the fancy stuff. So everything I do is frugal and um, cost effective. So what you see over here is I've got the typical chicken crate um, that we're using as toss baskets and if you have a friend in the chicken business and you in need of baskets you can perhaps do the same thing if you'd like so yeah let me just show you well so obviously it's the standard chicken crate <coughs> that we modified uh, used a latch that comes with it inside i've put synthetic um, grass um, and I like this because I can take it out and wash it and you never have to change the straw but of course you can do your normal straw bedding but I, I like this one it's soft for the pigeons and easy to clean and durable so the reason I chose to do the baskets like this is number one they don't damage they can get a lot of bumps and bruises and they can get wet without um, getting damaged you can leave them out in the rain if you need to so what we also did was I just drilled a hole at the top and then we cut the front off to make a just get it open to make a release hatch like so so if you want to toss your birds you use the basket itself we just um, cut that open in the in the side and then we bolted it we made hinges and um yeah i must say this actually worked quite quite well and it's nice and open um so your pigeons can actually breathe in it as well so yeah all you do is you close that up is when you transport your pigeons put in the uh your nut and it's nice and secure we're supposed to be if you get it right now we've got it so it's nice and secure can't go anywhere put your pigeons in there and bob's your uncle pigeon baskets frugal style or if you're one of those guys that's got a bit, a bit more resources and you can do the fancy delf stick baskets by all means but this is how we did it now let's talk about what happened today good afternoon everyone um thank you for tuning in once again um henry van rooyen here so just to give you an update so as you know this morning we decided to um go and uh, toss the birds put them to the road for their first rodeo um it was interesting to say the least yeah let's call it interesting a few lessons learned today and it was and a few nerves are, are at its end a few nerves are wrecked um so woke up this morning quite excited so the, the pigeons have been well prepared they live with good health um and they've been flying around the loft quite well so naturally um we decided well we're gonna take them off to the road and now it's time to toss as you've known um of the previous videos me and my infinite wisdom decided that we are going to actually toss them 25 kilometers uh, on their first toss and we ended up probably closer to 30 kilometers at the end uh, which in itself is really not a big problem for a first toss um, I've, I've went further than that on a first toss um, but I, I'm, I'm, I was quite confident in, in the birds and that they, they will be able to do it easily. So I will show you the liberation and um, um, at the point there. Unfortunately, it's not a very long uh, 
piece of video or a very good piece because what happened when we stopped there at the farm that which we liberated the birds the the daughter or the daughter-in-law or someone from, uh, of the the actual farmer came rushing down with a bucky um, she was under the impression we were there to steal um, her mealies uh, on the cornfields but uh, after I explained to her what we are actually doing and we're raising pigeons so that took up a bit of time she was quite interested and keen so I was a bit distracted and uh, so and I was a bit shy so I didn't want to speak into a camera and look like a complete idiot which I usually do anyway but it's uh, even that it becomes difficult when uh, especially when a, a rather attractive woman is there as well not as attractive as my wife just to put it out there for in case the wife's watching this <laughs> but yeah so anyway so we um we stopped there we liberated the birds and i was quite happy so when we opened them up they only took like one and a half turn immediately shot home or to the direction of them and i was quite excited and i said to the son let's back up we need to get um, these guys we need to beat them home um so on our way back we did see them actually um and i'll i'll show you a little bit of that you can't see it on the camera but we did catch up with them and we could see them actually on the side of the road at that point they were still flying in the right direction um, and, and I was convinced they will beat us home for sure because they were in the right direction They were flying at speed. They were still in one group and things were looking good So I put pedal to the metal Pedal to the metal metal to the pedal. I'm not sure But anyway, we, we, we rushed home. Let's put it that way to beat the birds and did we beat the birds home? Yes, we beat them by about two and a half hours to be honest uh, came home, not a single bird in sight, no bird in sight, waited, 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 and I thought to myself, here we go, here we go, the porpoise now really hit the fan, and um, started cleaning the loft, was in a foul mood, and all of a sudden, um, a big group of them came um, at once, attacking the landing board, trapping in, and there they were, and then there was a second group and a few stragglers that um, that also came along and then a few late stragglers as we're talking now at sunset there was a bird that actually crapped now so um, if you hear a noise in the background the neighbors has now decided at the time that I'm doing my videos they will now um, do home renovations and grinding but um, hope you can still hear me um, so yeah what I believe happened was today there was a lot of birds on the road and a lot of people um, were tossing their birds and I think my pigeons actually caught up to a one of those groups from another area and they derailed them a little bit and they took a wide detour but um, I haven't done a head count yet I will go to the loft now and uh, I'll show you guys and we'll see who's here and who's not and what the birds look like um, they looked in pretty good shape when they arrived I must say they weren't panting or anything they were quite thirsty because at that time it was all it was quite hot already um, I couldn't I, I took all the birds out which was just about um, 60 birds in the loft in the morning I had to leave uh, 10 um, because they weren't through the mold completely yet um, and there's quite a few that struggle with the malt in the last few flights. Let me just pause for the dogs that's barking. Okay, let's try again. Dogs stop barking. Um, yeah, so I've learned a few things. There was quite a few birds we couldn't toss because they're still going through the malt. And me and my infinite wisdom once more also decided earlier that I will not clip the 9th and the 10th um, flight like I usually do I will let them progress through the mold naturally and uh, well that turned out to be a mistake ladies and gentlemen um, because they asked they asked some that are still molting um, and if I had clipped the ninth and the 10th flight they all would have at least had a full set 
of uh, feathers to, to, to go through. So that means the few that I left behind will be um, will be behind and I can only toss them a bit later. So yeah, my recommendation was, that was a bit of an epic fail, the um, actual not clipping of the of the bird of the of, of the feather so lesson learned for next year i will both certainly on the first of february or even earlier be clipping the 9th and the 10th we are not in the northern hemisphere that we can manipulate the light um, to hasten um, the malt um, because we fly in winter and they need to be through the whole mold by april uh, when we start tossing as i just did so that was a bit of a something that I did see however one thing that I I'm, I realized also that we did right was even though the toss could have been much worse and they took a long time to get home um, the fact that we delayed the tossing and we allowed them to fly so strongly around the house by themselves an hour hour and a half by themselves I think really saved the day because they had enough stamina and muscle strength and endurance even though they got lost a little bit and made a mistake they were still able to actually get home by themselves and um, if you know if they weren't fit enough and you do that kind of thing um, I do believe it can become a little bit disastrous and the birds might not be able to get home and they then go lost they go sit in the felt or in other people's lofts and as we all know a big percentage of those birds you never hear from again so yeah uh first toss out of the way so from here on in we'll take it slow and steady but uh, at least the ice has been broken so let's go have a look at the loft uh who's here and who's not there but before we get there let me show you um the short little clip of the liberation itself and um the anticipation of beating them home and uh yeah we'll go and see i haven't even done a head count yet so now uh, we basket at um, 60 pigeons this morning of 10 was stayed at home so I'm um, let's let's see how many is in the loft um, there should be 70 pigeons in the loft that's how many they were when we basket this morning so I've got a suspicion we lost quite a few but I've just had a quick glance I couldn't help myself um, the ones that I like are all there, luckily, um, and there's definitely a few missing, but we'll go and have a look who's there and who's not. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a look. Um, the lights in my loft are still not working, problem with the earth leakage, long story. But as you can see, here are the culprits. These are the pigeons that actually made me... So very worried today, didn't you boys? Didn't you boys and girls? But I look in good spirits still. I look in good health. Um, picking at my feet. I know they want a little bit of food. I think they deserve a bite. Let me go get them a bite. And we'll check. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Um, like I said, here is the, um, the boys and girls that made their dad so very very worried um, so I'm just gonna give them a little bit of a treat I like to give them a little bit even if it's just a little bit of barley and a few loose seeds eating out of the hand um, just to maintain that relationship and that trust with the birds especially um, after this morning they were caught for the first time stuffed into baskets hey you two don't fight He's a bully, that one. Mmm, those droppings don't look too good, boy. Anyway, so, yeah, I just like to look at him. It's his water bowl, and no one else can have any water. Sis for you. Um, yeah, so I like to hand feed them. Make sure the relationship is still intact. Uh, they were basketed this morning for the first time. It was a new experience for all of them. Um, yeah, so... Come on. You're having too much now, son. Where's your, where's your little brother? 
So let's just have a quick recap on what's going on. It seems that most of our are you back now? Most of the birds are actually um, back in the loft bar uh, three. So there are three pigeons that uh, didn't make it home um, and that got lost. But I'm still hopeful that they will come back tomorrow. Um, and uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm not too displeased with the toss. It was nerve wracking. It's the first time that I had birds that um, actually took this long to fly a 25 kilometer toss. But it was the first toss. They did get caught up in a bigger group of pigeons that was much more experienced from other fanciers. They managed to actually break out as a group and come home as uh, mostly as a group. Um, but now, like I said earlier, one of my big worries at the moment now is, is the actual multi. So I've got so many pigeons that I had to leave. Ten pigeons that were still pushing the ninth or the tenth. Which in itself is not a big problem. But I had so many that still pushing sixes and sevens. Which means at some point they are going to push nines and tenths. And I cannot raise them. And I cannot train them. Now look at that. No problem. I've got one here on the arm. Spuckle Corp. The same one as last week. Um, Spuckle. As a belief. I can now for you. Iso. Come on. I'm making videos. Stop disbehaving yourself. Now, so. Come, girly. You're distracting me. Um, yeah, so I've got so many. That's actually now on the ninth and the uh, or sixes and sevens that's going to be pushing ninths and tenths. And of which I won't be able to, to train as, as I want and race as I want. Um, and I'll have to kind of manage that. And if I wasn't so ignorant and wise as I thought I was and just clipped the ninth and tenth, as I was told to do by many of my fellow fanciers, I thought, no, let's do it natural this year. Well, if anyone's interested, it didn't quite work out. Um, so I recommend if you're in the southern hemisphere and uh, you can't manipulate the mold with lights like you guys do over there in north of the equator, um, in the darkening and the light system, just clip the ninth and the tenth if you don't have any problems when you toss your birds. Um, so yeah, I, d I just think um, that was a bit of a mistake. But overall, I think it was a good experience for them. Um, like I said, they look in good spirit. They still look healthy. They seem to still trust me. And uh, yeah, crisis averted. So I think all things considered, we can consider this first toss as a success. So um, yeah, I'm going to... Love and leave you um, with a few clips of the day, us liberating the birds and uh, also um, in anticipation of getting them home. And uh, we'll have another video for you soon. Um, yeah, so I'm busy with a, a little research project of which I'm going to make a video in the next few days. My personal thoughts on if I had to choose. A World Cup team to represent South Africa in terms of pigeon racing. If there was such a thing as a World Cup. We sent 23 players to the World Cup rugby. Um, and I have now identified 23 top fancies in South Africa. That If I had to choose a World Cup team to represent South Africa. On the world stage. Um, top fancies in the country. Um, I've identified them. So tune in tomorrow for that one. And um, let me know in the comments what you think. So thank you for tuning in. And um, if you haven't done bef yet, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps me. And it helps the channel. Thanks, guys. And uh, God bless. And have a good one. Well, any whoopee. Ja.
Kijk hoe stuk hulle sommer hier begonnen. <laughs> Oké, okay, kom, nou moet julle vlieg. Kom, 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 kom vir daar. En daar gaat hulle. So wat nou gebeur is, eh, uh, waar is hulle nou? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so thank you. Um, uh, we just liberated the birds. We're about 25 kilometers from home. And this is the spot. Sorry, I couldn't make a, a nicer video when we liberated them. And comments a bit with the farmer's daughter was here checking that we don't steal the, the mealies. And she wanted to know about pigeon racing and got a bit distracted. And I also didn't want to look and sound like an idiot speaking into a phone while a young woman is around. It's not always a good thing. Anyways, um, so they off now. We're going to get into the car and see who beats who home. They just been liberated about a minute ago. Um, they made about two turns that I could see and they've gone in the right direction, which is a very good sign. So we'll meet you home and we'll see. Okay guys, so we're back home and the birds are not home yet. So they definitely took some kind of off-road and uh, needless to say now the nerves are gone. So we're patiently waiting for them to come. So uh, we'll keep you updated.